Hey everyone, Sam McKay from Enterprise DNA here. Today I'm going to go over cumulative totals, and I'm going to talk on a number of different in a number number of different ways that you can actually create them and then utilize them in your in your reports. What we're looking at here, this is uh, this is going to be something I'm going to go into during the next Enterprise DNA Learning Summit, so that's May 2018. And what I'm going to do is, obviously I'm going to go through things in depth, it's, it's going to be a big event, you know, six sessions over three days, so there's going to be a lot covered, and definitely register if you want to learn a lot about Power BI in a short space of time, I'll leave a registration link in the description below. But what I wanted to do during this particular tutorial is sort of, is break out, is break out this part of this uh, first page. So we're looking at, say, just our quarterly insights here, and I... I feel like cumulative totals are a really great way to showcase trends or showcase insights over time if you want to do some sort of comparison, um, especially at a daily level. Because we see here we're looking at a daily level, our daily results and how they're performing versus, um, in this case, it's previous quarter. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Then I'm also going to show you how you can go further, right? So you can showcase more insights. So it's not just looking at cumulative totals in isolation, it's actually looking at, okay, well, what is the difference between our cumulative totals? Because that's a surefire way to actually identify trends a lot better than if you're just, say, you know, looking at just the cumulative totals, you can actually see, okay, well, when did those trends diverge? Um, so on and so forth. And what's also great about Power BI is the dynamic way that you can drill into this, right? And that's why it is such a um, key concept to learn well inside of Power BI and why I wanna break it out and cover it in this particular session. Now, if you want to learn about all the modeling and, and all of that, that's what we're going to talk about uh, and, and all the other calculations that are going up on in this particular report and all the other um, in, uh, report pages in, in this large larger model. This is what we're going to cover in the Learning Summit. So so certainly um, check out the, the link in the description to learn more about that uh, and, and also uh, to come along if you are viewing this um, before, the actual, before the actual event uh, uh, takes place. Okay, so let's just jump to this page. Now, the key thing about cumulative totals is you have to understand basically the pattern, right? The pattern that uh, you need to implement um, to, to be able to uh, find the insight. And then also the key thing is to reuse it over and over and over and over again and reuse it in many different ways. And that's the, that's the great thing about the, about the pattern in general. So, um, or, or just the combination of DAX formulas. So you can call it a pattern, you can call it a combination, it's the same thing. So I'm just gonna drag these into, uh, into my report here. And this enables us to drill into any time period, so I like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create, I'm going to grab my date. So you've got to have a date table. It's absolutely key when you're running these cumulative total patterns, okay? So this, and, and that's just the same for any time intelligence. So never never try and get out of that. You've always got to have a, a strong, a really good date table that has a relationship down to your sales table. And then I'm just going to go and grab, you see I've got a lot of measures here. I'll be going through those during the summit. Um, I've got my total sales. So that's what, that's how we're going to start, right? I'm just going to uh, make this a little bit bigger. So we've got my uh, my total sales here. Now, once you have what I call core, your core measure, right? So sales is just a really simple core measure that is um, pretty uh, easy to calculate over our data, and we can then reuse it in many, many different ways, like moving averages or uh, rolling totals or cumulative totals, like we're going to do now. Now it's just a matter of overlaying the correct combination of DAX formulas to then get the cumulative total. Okay, and so I'm just going to create it uh, down here because I've, I want to recreate the entire thing so we can actually walk through it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to call this um, cumulative revenue. Okay, and then we need to just work out the pattern, right? And we need to incorporate our total sales into that. So I'm gonna um, use calculate, calculate is a key because calculate changes the context of the calculation. That's the key thing to note there. And then I'm gonna find my total sales measure. And then I'm gonna use filter. Okay, so filter is a great table function that, that can adjust the context of your calculation inside a calculate. And then I'm gonna use all selected here. And then inside of all selected, I'm just gonna go and add my dates column. And then I'm gonna go dates is less than or equal to max date. So I'll go over it in a second what, what is actually happening here. But what is actually happening here you know, in terms of um, you know, the, the theory of it is exactly what you would think. So I'll just drag that in. Uh, that's not actually calculated correctly because I've done that in incorrectly here. So I just need to go dates. 
Okay, so what is actually happening here? You see here that we have the cumulative result, which is exactly what we want. And what's also great is that if I change the context, the cumulative result changes as it goes, which is which is perfect. So what is actually happening here? Okay, so things to remember. Calculate can change the context of a calculation. So think about what total sales is doing here. It's giving us the sales for every single day. But if we want a cumulative total, we somehow need to manipulate this context so that not we're not only calculating up, say, one day, we're actually counting up all of these days here, right? And so that, and we need to do that for, uh, as we go down the list, as we go down the day, we've got to um, create a wider time frame that we actually are, are, are accumulating, right? And that's what this does this does, at every single row in this particular table this is evaluating to a different context or a different filter that is being placed over our sales table and then this total sales measure is going to do its work so what is it doing so it is removing it is removing at any particular row so let's have a look at the 10th of july this particular result here is um is is basically looking through all of these days and counting it up so we know that but what is it actually doing in the formula this, what this all selected is doing is it is removing any filters, any filters that are in place in this particular context. So in 2016, quarter three, it is, it is removing any filters from the date table within this particular context, okay? So 2016, Q3. And then it is reapplying those filters based on this logic here. So what's happening is it's saying um, remove all filters over this three month window, so quarter three, and then go through every single one of those days and register if that day is less than or equal to the max date. Now what the max date evaluates to on every single row here is actually the date. And so I can actually show you this. I'll, I'll go, I'll just go max date. Here. and all I've got to do is go like so and I'll show you what max date does so max date you'll see here that it just evaluates to exactly the same day it looks like it's sort of turned to um, US dollar, USD for US format but anyway it's, it's basically the day okay so that's the great thing about that and so what this is doing is it's saying okay well release all context from dates so evaluate through every single day in this particular quarter and say is the date less than or equal to the current day okay and so if it is then it is retained in the filter and uh, and then it is ultimately calculated up and so if we go down this list you'll see that this that it works at every single row in this particular table right every single row we release the context from the date and then we evaluate is we go through every single date and we evaluate is that, that date less than or equal to today and if it is then we leave it in the in the particular context and we count it up with using total sales so that's it right that's it and once you understand that logic, and, and I, do, I do say this um, quite often, once you understand this logic and you understand this formula, then it's so easy to reuse. And that's the great thing, right? Is check this out. If I wanted to, um, if I wanted to go and work out what is my cumulative revenue, uh, profits, for example, well, I could just need to copy that and then paste it in like so and change this total sales to another core measure to my total profits looks like oh hold on a second I'm just gonna add that to total profits and now I have my cumulative revenue so instead of my profits I have my revenues and then check out where this also comes in um, amazingly handy uh, with time intelligence so I'm just gonna copy it again and I'm gonna paste it and I'm gonna go cumulative revenue last quarter right and so I've already worked up a time a time intelligence calculation which is sales our LQ for sales our last quarter so I'll just try to find that one, sales LQ. So I've already calculated that. And so then I can just drag this in. You see how quickly you can do it? And then if I wanted to go even further and branch out even further, this is where measure branching comes in. I could say, well, what is my revenue, revenue difference per quarter? And then all I have to do here is go cumulative, um, cumulative revenue minus cumulative cumulative revenue last year last quarter so 
and if I drag this in, and this is how I get that additional chart you'll see in a second, you'll see that now we have a cumulative difference between the two um, revenues, uh, revenue this quarter and revenue last quarter. So you see, the, the, the cool thing about this is how quickly you can whip it up. It's, it's pretty, pretty phenomenal how fast you can do it. Um, and the, the, it comes down to understanding that combination, that combination of formulas that you need to use um, to be able to achieve it. That's where it comes down to. And so let me just grab that. So now we've got our cumulative total here. And then if we wanted to just showcase the difference, well then I'm just, I'm just copying and pasting again. And, um, and then we can see that that is the difference through time. So there's quite a bit there, right? It's quite a bit there, which is which. Is, but but also, it is it's quite it's quite amazing how quickly you can you know reuse it, right? And that and that is the great thing. And then if I come back to the example here, so this is again what we're going to go through um, in the in the learning summit. So obviously, the, this is just a shorter video. The session is going to be um, probably for an hour, an hour or so, and we'll explain how how to set up far more things that are, that I are somewhat glanced over there. But I just wanted to focus on cumulative totals today. But then you know, see you can utilize everything else in your model as well to identify trends you know see you see here if we have a look at this particular um, insight you see that the trend diverges quite a bit it's also showcased here and you know we can ask questions about that why did it happen and we can drill even further into all of our other insights that we have down here so lots to learn there right lots um, lots of great stuff lots of great insight that you can that you can achieve and that's the key Okay, I'm going to round things off there. Certainly, register uh, for the event below if you haven't. Uh, it's in May 2018. It's going to be it's going to be it's going to be an incredible event. It's really detailed. I'm going to go through all my best practices. And if you're learning Power BI, I wanted to master Power BI. You are going to learn a serious amount um, about about great development work um, by coming to the event. So really look forward to seeing you there. If you like the content, got a lot out of it. Um, certainly throw us a like. Really appreciate it on the video. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Plenty of great content coming up, um, you know, in the very near future, and uh, and for some time yet. So we want to get that in your hand, into your hands as soon as possible. Okay, all the best. Talk to you soon.